Hello, bioethics students. I wanted to create this short video with some feedback about your argument map assignment. I am in the middle of grading your argument maps, and there are some common mistakes that I thought I would address in the short video. So I hope you will watch this video and understand the argument map assignment better, especially in preparation for submitting an argument map with your group. Hopefully this will be a learning experience and you will be better at mapping arguments as a result of this first assignment. And as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. The way I graded these argument maps is on a 10 point scale. And if um, your argument map was very outstanding, one of the best in the class, and there was really no room for me to comment on something that could be, could be improved, then you got a 10 out of 10. If there were a few places where you um, could have made some improvements, but I still felt like you had a grasp of the way to map an argument, how to map an argument, then I gave you a 9 out of 10. And if there were more than a few places where there was room for improvement and and or I felt like uh, maybe you had uh, misunderstood some aspects of how to map an argument or done some things that showed a failure to grasp some of the basic tenets of how to map an argument, then you might have gotten an 8 or a 7 out of 10. Um, but in the feedback that I'm submitting with your assignment as I grade them, I have included a model map of the Hard Truth About the Fall essay. So I hope you will t spend some time looking at that map and thinking about um, how I've mapped that argument and trying to understand why I did things the way I did. And as always, let me know if you have any questions. So here is some feedback about the, um, some of the common mistakes that I saw being made in the argument map assignment, which I hope helps to clarify how that assignment was graded and how to map an argument. So I especially liked the written component of the argument maps, the arguments written in premise conclusion form. Almost all of you um, followed directions in that part, got the line in the right place, got a nice succinct a conclusion written at the end, which was accurate. So um, nice job uh, doing that part, um, separating out the different points that were made within the argument, etc. I want to go through some specific um, problems that I found that that um, kept repeating themselves. So I want to um, draw your attention to a few things. Probably if you got an eight or a seven or a nine, um, you, uh, these are the reasons that you did because you didn't follow these rules that I'm about to present. So I wanted to go over these. Then you can go back and look at your own argument map and see um, whether you violated any of these rules that I'm about to review. So the first one is that arrows should represent reasons for believing. Okay, so a lot of times I saw something like this. Colleges face financial ruin if they don't open and financial pressure is not a reason to risk the lives of staff and students. These were two um, premises that were in the, I think, the hard truth about reopening article. Um, and a lot of you represented that this way, because this is a natural right way to reason. You would say colleges face financial ruin, but that's not a reason to risk the lives of students and staff. Your mind would kind of move from the first premise to the second premise in that order, especially if that's the way they're presented in the article. So it's natural to put the arrow pointing from one to two because that's sort of how you move through thinking about this. But remember, arrows represent reasons for believing. So the fact that colleges face financial ruin if they don't reopen is not a reason to believe the second premise. Okay. The, that's not the way these premises relate, okay? It's not, um, you should not have put an arrow like that. So I X'd it out. So you'll see that that's incorrect. Um, and there were a number of other places where a similar kind of um, issue like this came up where you put the arrow between the premises because you would naturally move from one premise to the next with the flow of the argument, but it's not actually presenting a reason in support of that of the premise that it's pointing to so um so that was one issue that came up repeatedly 
Another issue is that each premise and the conclusion should be a complete, concise statement. Just one idea in each premise and the conclusion. Um, and that will get you into trouble when you try to map it if you've built in too much into the conclusion or if you, you haven't made clear what your statement is. So I saw some sentences like this, urging colleges not to reopen. That's not a complete sentence. Um, so what is this point? What is the author, the, whoever, the student that wrote something like this, trying to say it's not always clear when it's not clear um, in, the, in the context of the argument? So you should have a complete sentence, something like that. Okay, colleges should not reopen in the fall. Okay, the first one is a sentence fragment. That's why um, it's not what is asked for in the assignment. Okay, the conclusion should not contain a premise. This is another mistake that I saw um, enough that I felt like mentioning it here. So somebody, uh, several of you put something like this in your conclusion. Colleges shouldn't reopen in the fall since this would result in preventable death. All right, that's um, a fair point and the point that some of the authors were making in the articles. Um, but the problem with this is that you haven't pulled apart the premise and the conclusion. So the fact that opening colleges will result in preventable death and now probably has is not is is a reason for believing the first half of this premise. So we don't want to um, stick those together because the whole point of the assignment is to pull that all apart so we can see how each piece relates. So that should look something more like this. Colleges should not reopen in the fall and then the point about preventable death would be above in the premises. Okay, be sure the arrow points the right direction. Okay, so I did see a few times that the arrow seemed like it was reversed, like it should have been flipped around. Okay, so here's two options for these two premises. Colleges are ideal environments for spreading the disease and social distancing is not possible in a college environment. Which way do you think is the correct way to represent these two premises? I'll give you a minute to think about it, or a moment, because now I'm going to move on and say, so you should pause it if you don't want to hear the answer, that this is the correct way. Two supports one, not the other way around. The fact that social distancing is not possible in a college environment, arguably, um, we've got to give other premises to support that. Is the reason, part of the reason, that colleges are ideal environments for spreading the disease? Now, there could be other reasons offered in support of that, like, um, like colleges require close contact and um, college students are eager to um, spend time together and etc. Okay, um, but this is one reason that social distancing is not possible. One reason to believe that colleges are ideal environments for spreading the disease. Okay, you got to make sure you use the plus sign correctly. Okay, so I saw a number of arguments like this, which here the two is just idle. It doesn't even matter because it's not being involved in supporting number three the way it's represented. So um, in this case, if you're saying one supports three, why is it even connected to the two? Um, so that's not the way you should represent things. Here's another um, error that I saw. So you put the plus sign where really you should have had two separate arrows pointing. So here we have two reasons that campuses shouldn't reopen in the fall. And some of you took two reasons like this and thought, well, they're kind of going together. They're kind of a pair, right? Reopening campus will be deadly for students and faculty. Those sort of fit together, right? So you put the plus in between. But the question we have to ask to know whether we're going to include a plus in this map is, would these premises still provide support for, the con for number three if we took one of them away? So if we took away number one, and just had number two, reopening campus will be deadly for faculty. Is that a reason that colleges shouldn't reopen in the fall? Well, yes. No matter what you think of your faculty, uh, our lives are not worth risking, in, in my opinion, in the opinion of 
uh, the authors who were defending these views. So, so two can provide support by itself for three, and one could also provide support by itself for three. And so for that reason, you don't need the plus sign between them. So in this case, you should have had two separate arrows pointing from one to three and another arrow pointing from two to three. Excuse me, one arrow from one to three and one arrow from two to three. Okay, that's why this is incorrect. Okay, um, here's a case where the plus is used correctly. Okay, so here we have campuses shouldn't reopen until there's a vaccine and there won't be a vaccine by the fall. That's why campuses shouldn't reopen in the fall. Okay, now you notice one by itself would not support three. Camps shouldn't reopen until there, vac there is a vaccine. Well, you might think there will be a vaccine by now. You might have thought that when the article was written. Um, and the fact that there won't be a vaccine by the fall wouldn't by itself support three unless you're also claiming that campuses shouldn't reopen until there is a vaccine. Okay, so here this one is written correctly. Okay, another point is to follow the rules. So I found all sorts of creative maps that did not follow the rules that were given and still looked very pretty and nice. So an example is this. There was stuff like this. There were lots of boxes and circles and other things that were not um, presented to you in the, in the model. So um, the reason you have to follow the rules for this assignment is that this is a formal system that you're learning about and the arrows and the way the numbers are written and the plus signs, they all have distinct meanings. And so um, we have to use those particular meanings that are set in stone, not really in stone, but they are specified at the outset in order to be clear and consistent about how we're representing the arguments. Um, so while this is incorrect, um, a place where you could use this skill of sort of presenting things in a cool, different way is in your videos. Um, so with the videos, you should feel free to go nuts with creativity, right? Like put things how you think, how you think would be cool to view them, um, but not in this argument mapping assignment. Here it's a follow the rules exercise.